The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship for this Sunday, April 25th. It is a joy to gather as God's people and to be reminded of God's grace at work in our lives. My name is Susan Seitzma Bratt and I serve as the senior pastor here. If you are visiting with us, we would welcome the opportunity to connect with you. Please email us at visitor at crossroadspres.org so we might share more about our ministry. Our congregation is a praying congregation, and if you have a prayer concern or a joy that you would like this body to lift up, please email those to prayers at crossroadspres.org. We have a few exciting announcements this morning about our ministry. Last week, we revealed that the Vacation Bible School in June is going to be called the Rocky Railway, where we'll be learning about how Jesus pulls us through. Online registration for children who've completed 3K and 4K, excuse me, all the way up to fourth grade, is open through May 23rd. To follow our COVID safety protocols, we do have limited space this year, and walk-in registrations won't be permitted. So sign up soon. We could also use a little bit of help. In order to host Vacation Bible School and have a fun time with all of our students, we could use adults and teenagers to volunteer to help. Adults can sign up online now to be crew leaders and assistants. We can use any number of hands and gifts. Students finishing 7th grade through 12th grade can also join the fun by volunteering this week to join our work crew, learning and practicing service and leadership. Please sign up online to make this week a success. Finally, in order for Vacation Bible School to take place outdoors successfully this summer, we're in need of financial donations to purchase 34 pop-up canopy tents. You're welcome to donate online via my crossroads. Thank you so much for your generous support. And finally, starting next Sunday, May the 2nd, we will begin a new worship series called Half Truths, inspired by a book by <clears throat> Pastor Adam Hamilton. Half Truths are simple phrases that sound Christian, like something you might find in the Bible. They capture some element of truth but they miss the point in important ways and may lead people to conclusions about God that are not only untrue, but might push some folks away. We hope to examine these half-truths and lead ourselves to greater truths that we find in Scripture and by following Jesus. Although we worship in different spaces, we do worship together in spirit and in truth. And so today, it is a joy to be led in worship by some of our fourth graders who just this month completed their worship milestone workshop with Jenny O'Connor. They learned why and how we worship. They learned all about our sanctuary and practice skills for becoming worship leaders. We welcome Jacob Willis to lead us in our call to worship. Please join together in our call to worship, following the words from Psalm 100 on the screen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know, know that, that the Lord, the Lord is, God, is God, and it's he who made, made us, and, and we, we are his. his. We, we are his people, the sheep, sheep of, of his pasture. pasture. Enter his gate, gates with thanksgiving and its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the, For the Lord, Lord is good, and his, his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Let us sing, sing with joy as we worship God. God.
awesome God is and how much we need him in our lives. We become aware of our own sin. Romans 3.23 reminds us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we come now to confess our sin together as the body of Christ. Let's pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we are humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory, to the glory of your, of your name. name, amen. After we confess, it is important to remind each other that God does not leave us in our sin. First John 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins to him, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. This is good news. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are we forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks to be God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together in gratitude. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy. Oh 
kids, we are a few of the fourth graders who completed our worship milestone with Mrs. O this month. I'm Ben. I'm William. I'm Mara. One of the first things Ms. O told, told us was that worship is a verb. Worship involves action, stuff for us to do. We looked to Psalm 95 for examples of worship verbs. It told us to sing to the Lord. It told us to shout joyfully and come to God with thankful hearts. It even said we should bow and kneel before God because he is our creator. We also looked to Acts chapter 2 to find worship verbs. There it mentions the eating the Lord's Supper together. It said that people should meet together for worship and generously share their food. The most important verb we talked about was love. That is why most of the important commandments say to love God and love people. When you come to worship, it means that you are going to be active while you are here. We don't sit and watch others sing. We are all commanded to sing. We don't watch others pray. We all speak the words of prayers and listen with understanding as others speak prayers. We clap and shout and wave our hands as well as bow and kneel and listen. Worship is a verb. We are going to practice a worship verb right now. Please sing with us a song of praise that might even get you clapping and waving your hands.
please bow in prayer. Startle us, O God, with your truth, and open our hearts and our minds to your wondrous love. Speak your word to us. Silence in us any voice but your own, and be with us now as we turn our attention, our minds, and our hearts to you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our first scripture lesson today is a reading from Psalm 23. Listen for God's word to you today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in, in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our second passage is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. There are some passages in the Bible and maybe some songs we sing here at Crossroads that are a touchstone. They're things that we come back to when we're having a hard time and they ground us. Psalm 23 is one of those touchstones of faith. It's a passage that perhaps is familiar to you. Maybe it's even one that you know by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. When you hear that phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, what do you see in your mind's eye? Are you transported back to that Sunday school room, maybe where you learn to memorize these words? Or maybe it takes you closer to the present, to a memorial service for a relative or a friend. Psalm 23 is very familiar. And those words, the Lord is my shepherd, <clears throat> is even more familiar. Except we don't have many shepherds hanging out here in Ozaki County. I don't know of any in Mequon. Do you? So we hear this phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, but we don't live on farms. We're not shepherds, and sheep are not part of our day-to-day -day work. And so we have to do a little bit of work to kind of understand this passage. So what do you think of when you hear this word, shepherd? 
Perhaps what comes to your mind is our Christmas pageant from this past year. I think of somebody in a long road with a staff, like one of our kids from our Zoom pageants. Now, what do you have in your mind's eye when you think of a shepherd? Are there particular adjectives? Maybe you think of strength. A shepherd has to be strong to wrangle those sheep with the staff. Or maybe you think of patience. After all, sheep kind of wander off and they get into trouble. Or maybe you think of perseverance. All right, so we've got an image of a shepherd in our mind's eye. Someone who's strong, who's patient, who perseveres. But what about sheep? Again, we don't have too many sheep in our day-to-day -day lives, unless you've recently gone to a petting zoo. Perhaps you've heard sheep, though, described in a particular way, maybe as docile or dumb. I know I said a word in church, dumb. We don't interact with sheep very much, but those are kind of the stereotypes we have about them. Well, I did some research this past week about sheep, and I learned that they are really different from other animals. For example, cows, cattle, they're, they're herd animals too. They hang out together in a community, in a group. But cows, in order to move from place to place, they need to be driven from behind. So that's when you see those images of, of cowboys wrangling cows. They're, they're driving them from behind. But that's not sheep. Sheep are very unique. They prefer to be led. They're one of the few animals that will follow a leader where they're led. And sheep are also very unique. They have this innate ability to form a trusting relationship with a shepherd. Sleeping sheep will not wake up if their shepherd is in their midst because they just know the sound of the shepherd's steps, their smell, their voice. But if a stranger comes into a herd of sheep, they will wake up, they will move, they will be active. Sheep have this innate sense of community, and they know and trust their shepherd, and they will follow that shepherd anywhere, even off the edge of a cliff. Can you imagine that strong bond between a sheep and a shepherd? So when the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, this is the relationship. This is the image that the psalmist is saying. And you know, what, in, you know why the psalmist is using this imagery? Because David himself was a shepherd. He knew what it was to herd sheep. He knew what it was to care for the flock, to tend to the flock. So when David thinks of God, he thinks of a shepherd. Now, we don't know the details of why this psalm was written, but, but we do get a sense that there was trouble of some sort because immediately after the psalmist talks about, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he talks about going through a valley. What we know is when things get hard and we're in the valleys of life, King David, who wrote this psalm, responds to this trouble by looking up to God. The Lord is my shepherd. Our version for today says, I <clears throat> shall not want. Another way of putting it is, I have everything I need. Even when things are hard and we're struggling, God is our shepherd and God makes sure that we are safe and cared for and provided for. Now, we are not sheep and we don't live like sheep, but we do have some lessons to learn. Because just like sheep, we too have been in the valleys of life. Perhaps you've been in a valley with a relationship that has gone sideways and it needs mending. Or maybe you're living in a valley right now and you're struggling with health issues. Or maybe, like the words of the psalmist, you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and you're grieving the death of a loved one. This valley time is a time when, when it just feels hard, when life is difficult and you just can't quite see your way through. It's just too much. And the psalmist reminds us that in those valleys, that's especially where God shows up. God shows up as a shepherd to lead us through the valleys, 
because we can't get through them on our own, just like sheep don't know the way. But also, God provides for us when we're in the valleys. When you're in the valleys, you need a shepherd to tell you where to stop and rest, to see where the food is, and to pay attention to where water is. So if you find yourself in the valley of illness or struggle or grief or, or some other time when you're more vulnerable, you realize you can't do it on your own. You realize that you've got to depend on someone to carry you through. And the good news is that we worship and believe in a God who shepherds us, who provides for us, who walks beside us, who tells us where to stop and rest. God wants to restore us. God wants to, to provide for us. But sometimes, when we're in those valleys, we have a really hard time seeing that there's even a shepherd with us. All we can see are the walls of the valley. We have a hard time looking around and seeing that there's a patch of grass over there, or maybe there's some water. And that's what we're paying attention to right now in this season of Easter. Because we believe that God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, the good shepherd, to live and minister and die and rise again so that we too would have new life. What, what the psalmist is describing in this psalm is a deep and abiding, trusting relationship with the shepherd. Trust that's hard and certain. Not an optimistic view of things, but trust that knows that God will be with you to lead you through. Just as God led the Israelites through the wilderness to the promised land. And it's this view of God walking with us through those valleys and hard times that the writer John is, is writing to in his letter to 1 John. This letter is written to a church that was really having a hard time seeing how God was faithful and how they could continue to follow Jesus. And this letter talks about God's deep love for them. The same God that was a shepherd to David in Psalms is abiding with this church in 1 John. I don't know if you caught it, but this word abide was used seven times in our passage for today. It's kind of an old-fashioned word. It's not something we use every day. But I love it. You know why? Because of what it means. To abide means you go on a journey with someone. You sit with them. You accompany them. Abiding is really different from popping in to see how you're doing once in a while. To abide is to go along with someone. And that's how God is in relationship with us. God abides with us. God walks with us and journeys with us. Whether we're on the mountaintops of life or the valleys of life, God abides. Well, there's this beautiful old hymn that was written a few hundred years ago by a Methodist. And, and he wrote this hymn in response to the story of Easter how Jesus wants to walk with us, how Jesus gives us new life. And what I love about it is that this hymn acknowledges the valleys of life. And it goes like this. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When others fail and other comforts flee, help of the helpless, Oh, abide with me. Friends, we know that as we walk through hard times, sometimes our friends aren't there for us. Sometimes even our family can't show up for us. Help of the helpless. God will abide with us. God walks with us. God actually provides a way through the valley for us. And when the going gets hard, that's the sort of God I want to believe in and follow. A God who cares about me, not just when I'm perfect and put together, but when life is hard and when we're struggling. Friends, our God is a shepherd who comes to us where we are, 
who finds us, who cares for us, who helps us on our journey of faith. So when you find yourself in the valley of life, and you will, in fact, you might say the last year has been kind of a valley as we've walked through this uncertain time of the pandemic, perhaps you might look around to see how God is at work even in that place. So I wonder, as you go into this week, how have you experienced God as a shepherd taking care of you? Sometimes we don't see God right beside us. Sometimes we kind of have to look back to reflect on how God has been at work. So this week, I, I invite you to reflect on that. In fact, you might even pause the video if you're worshiping with others and reflect. How has God abided with you, walked with you? And how might you abide with God? In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer of us all, amen. After we hear the good news, we say what we believe. Often these words come from the church's creeds and confessions. In these writings, we remember and tell the world who we are, what we believe, and how we should live according to God's word. So let us stand in body or in spirit and firm what we believe together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with, with the Father, Father, by whom all were things, things were made. For who us men, and for our salvation, salvation come down from, from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with the glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified and spoke by the prophets. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. And we believe in one holy Catholic and one Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the recognition of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, please join your hearts with mine in prayer. Great shepherd of our souls, Though you could thunder from on high, most often you step quietly into our midst and lead us to streams of living water that sustain and refresh us. You nudge us away from dangerous paths and protect us from harm. You remain especially close to us when we are afraid and in the valley of the shadow. Help us to recognize your voice that we might follow you daily Teach us to discern your truth that we may walk in the light. Lord, we acknowledge our continuing struggle to trust that you have our best interests at heart. Though you provide for us time and again, still we turn to other places, other people for affirmation and purpose. 
We would sooner trust our instincts than your will. We would rather seek meaning in our accomplishments and connections than in our status as your beloved children. So may the beauty of your voice resonate within us. May we refuse to settle for anything less than you as our guide. Lord, as you shepherd us, lead us to shepherd others. We thank you especially for those within our church who invest in our children and youth. Refresh them out of your abundance, inspire their imaginations, and restore their spirits. By their example, may our young people learn what it means to love and follow you. Come alongside all parents in our congregation that they might love like Jesus loved us and lead with the wisdom of your spirit. May each of us, regardless of age or stage of life, seek the counsel of someone who is faithfully following after you. And may we, in turn, be quick to mentor one who is newer on the path of faith. Gather us together as your people, O Lord, that young and old alike would chase after wisdom and grow in grace. For those who are ill, grieving, or losing hope, may you bind their wounds and may your goodness and mercy pursue them. For our elders and deacons, may you anoint them afresh with your spirit and provide all they need and more to faithfully lead our church. Through them, may we hear clearly your voice calling us into the next season in the life of this congregation. Then may we follow and step into the glorious future you have prepared. We pray this in the name of the shepherd who gave his life for his sheep and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have so much to thank God for. We give out our gratitude and generosity. Our Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Please remember to send your gifts and offerings to the church by mailing your checks or giving online. Today's song of reflection reminds us that Jesus is the good shepherd who leads us and cares for us.
God, we recognize that the greatest gift is the gift of love. May our gifts and offerings be a response of abundant love that you can use to bless others in Ozaki County and beyond. We pray this through Christ our Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing with thankful hearts as we dedicate our lives to following God. Friends, may we follow the shepherd and go out into God's world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all persons, and love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us all. Amen. Yeah. 
step 